Welcome back to Historical Context. Today we continue our series on the growth and fracturing of the New England colony. Today's episode is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode, but it's on an important topic, the Saybrook Colony. The Saybrook Colony was a unique little colony, and it was in an interesting place, an interesting position, an interesting time in history. So I'm going to dedicate this short episode today to talking about this short-lived colony that had pretty big plans when you look at the overall scope of the times. Now we know that by the early 1630s several Puritans had traveled to and started settling the area we know today as Connecticut. In 1632 Robert Rich, the Earl of Warwick and head of the Council of New England, granted a patent to establish a colony in the area to a group known as the Saybrook Group. Now we've talked about this concept before in the past where people basically form independent companies in order to colonize areas. The Virginia Company was one that colonized Jamestown. The Plymouth Company was the other that colonized Plymouth. So this concept was not unfamiliar at the time. The group was led by the first Viscount Say and the second Baron Brook. Say Brook. They were a Puritan group in England who were ardent opponents of King Charles I and they were among some of the highest ranking officials in government. This patent issued by uh, the Earl, later known as the Warwick Patent, had an interesting problem with it. According to the Connecticut State Library, the patent did not mention the backing of King Charles or the Council of New England. So this patent may not have actually been totally official. And why would King Charles back it? It involved some of his biggest opponents in government. In 1635, the Saybrook Group in England selected its first governor, John Winthrop the Younger. That's right, John Winthrop's son was uh, caught up in all of this. He had experience working alongside his father at the Massachusetts Bay Colony and was currently residing in England. Winthrop the Younger was dispatched to the mouth of the Connecticut River and charged with building a fort. At this point it appears that several prominent Puritans including Viscount Say, Baron Brook, and Oliver Cromwell were going to move to Saybrook to escape the political turmoil in England. So now you have this colony that you're working to form, you want to build a fort and very high-level Puritans in English government are thinking about leaving. When Winthrop the Younger arrives at the mouth of the Connecticut River, he discovers an unmanned Dutch post. And that would make sense considering what we've discussed up to this point about the Dutch encroaching in the region, the natives there, and the Puritans. And it's been a problem. We, uh, we had obviously the, a war fought, the Pequot War, over this area. So this unmanned Dutch post should not come as a surprise to anyone. Winthrop the Younger removes all representations of the Dutch from the trading post and formally claimed the territory for the Saybrook colony. Construction began on a fort at Saybrook and plans were made to essentially make it the biggest and best fort in New England. But there was a problem. Soon word in England was getting around that the Puritans were planning on leaving. I tell you that gossip mill People think it's bad today. It looks like it was pretty bad in the 1630s as well. The rumors caused many to fear that they would not be able to sell their estates and take their earnings to Saybrook. So these wealthy Puritans who were planning on leaving, now because word was getting around, they felt like they may not be able to sell what they owned and take it over with them to the new world. 
In 1638, the plans for moving were abandoned, but that didn't stop the infant colony from continuing to kind of putz along, if you will. In 1639, John Winthrop the Younger stepped down as governor and was replaced by a man named George Fenwick. Fenwick moved from England to the colony, but without a purpose, he really struggled to attract new citizens. In 1644, after the death of his wife, Fenwick handed the colony over to the colony of Connecticut and returned to England the following year. For decades after the failure of the Saybrook colony, residents of that area still talked about the fact that a prominent Puritan colony was planned there. And it would have been interesting to see what would have happened had Oliver Cromwell and the other Puritans decided to leave. Obviously, the course of English history and the English Civil War would have likely changed. And maybe then that colony would not have been known in any way with them because they would have just been wealthy Puritans coming over to Connecticut, sort of like the uh, Maryland, basically, of New England. When Oliver Cromwell's uncle passed away, he inherited a large estate, and that inheritance likely also motivated him to stay, and the upcoming Civil War would take its place in history. So the Saybrook Colony was the big thing that I guess never happened in Connecticut, but worth talking about when looking at history. And unfortunately, other than the Warwick patent, not much else has survived that short time uh, of Saybrook. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll be back next week to continue the growth and fracturing of New England on historical context. <laughs>